this is Yarrow Starak, and welcome to the Entrepreneur's Journey podcast. Today's guest is Nick Stevenson. If you're currently looking to become a self-published author, or perhaps you already are a self-published author, but you're struggling to sell your books, then you need to listen to this interview. Nick Stevenson's about to explain his process, his journey he went through as he became a writer. He writes a thriller series and he was struggling to sell his books. So he started to learn about and then apply traditional internet marketing techniques to sell his fiction books, which worked really well. And he became a full time author, making between ten and fifteen thousand dollars a month. He then applied what he learned to become a teacher and a coach to help other authors also use internet marketing techniques to sell their books and started to work for a lot of other people as well. And today he's making over $50,000 a month combined from sales of his fiction books as well as his uh, teaching information publishing business for other authors. So you're going to hear this whole story in a moment in the interview. Before you listen on to that interview, make sure you go to interviewsclub.com to sign up to my email newsletter so you get all my latest podcasts as soon as they're available. That's the special email newsletter I run for this EJ podcast. So you'll get early notification of all my new episodes as well as a series of my very best interviews from my podcast archives. To get onto that email newsletter, go to interviewsclub.com, which will direct you to my blog where you can sign up to that email newsletter. Okay, here is the interview with Nick. Enjoy. My guest today is Nick Stevenson, who's come on the show to talk about a subject I think I haven't really covered in my podcast, uh, maybe one time before I can think back to one interview where I sort of touched on this. So I think it's great to get an update on the subject of being a self-published author and then marketing yourself. And I'd love to sort of dive into the subject because there's a lot of overlap because it's internet marketing, but also as bloggers, my audience are bloggers, they're writers. A lot of them have an ambition to be a published author as well. A lot of overlap. And Nick has done, well, you could, could almost say both sides of the, this question. He's been and is a published author, and he also helps publish published authors to market their work using, which I'm pretty sure we're going to find out will be, I don't want to say it, but it's traditional internet marketing. I don't think a lot of authors would like to be called internet marketers, but you know, at the end of the day, that's what we're all doing. So, Nick, thank you for joining me. It's my pleasure, and I think we have to wear that internet marketing badge with pride. I know I do, but it's, uh, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, it's a bit of a mindset thing to get over at first. Yeah, I, I think I've been wearing that badge with pride for a long time, but I, I think you cop a bit of flack uh, just uh, from the, the jaded world of people who've been hurt in the past from buying products and you know not believing all the hype and just being pretty much bitter and Twisted and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? no, I feel you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, just a little uh, highlight reel for for Nick here. Nick's uh, go- well. Nick, we're going to find this out, but Nick has been a writer for a while and he was having a, a lot of problems to get out there with his books and then discovered the internet marketing way and within six months was bringing $15,000 per month from selling his nonfiction fiction books. So I definitely want to dive into that with you, Nick, but you've also had great success again, then launching your own training business for authors. And I think the numbers I've got in front of me that you're, you're up to around 50000 a month now combined from selling your own books as well as helping other authors. So is that all correct? It's it's slightly higher I think than when okay. I than when I sent the numbers in. But yeah, it's it's around that that mark and it's been it's been an absolutely crazy 18 months or so it really has. Um absolutely insane, but I know we're going to get into that right. in the session. So, I'll, so, so yeah, this I'll is all drive. fresh for you. This is when you say 18 months, is this like that that highlight reel that all happened in the last 18 months? Basically, I I think and we were just talking about this offline was um I think you realize what you need to do to get where you want to be um, and you have to take action. So for me, it was very much a case of I, I'd uh, written these, I'd written five novels at the time and they just weren't going anywhere. They were selling a couple of copies a day. You know, I was earning, you know, maybe a thousand dollars a month, which is nothing to sniff at. 
But every time I, I waited a month or two, that figure would start to drop and I'd have to publish something new to try and get it back up again. And I was just thinking to myself, like, I'm going to have to write a new novel every six weeks <laughs> just to stay level. You know, this cannot work. It's not a long-term strategy. It's that, you know, that idea of if I just throw content out into the world, magic will happen mm. and I'll suddenly become rich and famous. You know, it just doesn't happen. So I think I studied a lot of the kind of traditional internet marketing approaches as to how we publicize and monetize content in general and then applied it specifically to how authors can do this. And I think within about six months of doing this, I brought that income figure up to sort of five figures, 15,000 a month. Um, and it really was just a case of actually taking action, mm -hmm. realizing what I'd done up until that point wasn't going to get me where I needed to be. So changing my mindset and changing my whole approach upside down and just focusing on what mattered. And uh, that's um, what happened. I'm very much looking forward to hearing how the model applies to authors, because I've been a proponent, uh, you know, do uh, using it myself and teaching others this sort of write a blog, build an email list, sell digital products and services. And there is a significant overlap, but you're still selling writing, you're selling content. But for me, the part where I'm really curious is if you're a fiction author, you know, whatever it is, you're, you know, want to be a JK Rowling or you want to be a, the next Divergent series. I'm sure everyone out there wants to be the next, et cetera, turn into a movie series. I, I mean, I have to admit, I'm, I'm in there too. I wouldn't mind having a, you know, a book come out and have it <laughs> become a TV series or something like oh, that. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how this traditional format of online marketing can be translated into selling your own books, in particular fiction, because I'm very much in the teaching people how to do things market, which translates very well to teaching products you sell, mm -hmm. where fiction, I kind of th think, well, do I write my fiction on a blog and then sell a book that contains the same characters, something like that. But I know you're going to answer those questions, Nick, but I want to, before we dive into that aspect, to actually hear about your background and what you did, I guess, before you even became a marketer, really, I guessing you were just a budding author. So um, as uh, I normally ask, did you have any entrepreneurial background before you did what you do today? But I'm thinking for you, perhaps it might make more sense to ask, you were writing books and probably doing a day job for most of your maybe post teenage high school years. Is that correct? Well, absolutely. I mean, it's one of these crazy things. I never set out in life to be an author. I never had this dream of being a published author or anything like that when I was young. I always enjoyed writing. Don't get me wrong. I loved it. I loved sitting down and just coming up with stuff and crafting, you know, sentences that flowed and being really happy with something that you've created. You know, it was amazing. But you know, in the school system, um, I know it is in the UK, I guess it's the same in, in the States and other parts of the world as well, is they don't sit you down um, with the career counsellor and talk about, you know, author as a career path. You know, they, they just don't do it. You know, you can take all these standardised tests that you want. Author is never going to come up as a, <laughs> probably as a career. probably steer you away from it, I'd say. Exactly. And, you know, there are, there's lots of reasons for this. And I think traditionally the way we've all grown up with uh, the writing and publishing business is if you are a talented and be lucky enough to get published and then see lucky enough to hit it big after being published, you might make it as an author, but that's, you know, the, the 1% of the 1% of people who get their books published um, will be those kind of authors. You know, you can probably count them on the fingers of one hand who actually make it each year as an author. And, you know, I th this is why they don't teach it as a career in school because there's no guarantees. There's no, there's no system you can follow. There's no blueprint for how to get a job as an author. So they just, they don't cover it. And that's fair enough. Um, so it was never really something that crossed my mind. Um, but I always wanted my own business. I always wanted my own uh, my own thing that I could own, that I could control, that I could be creative with and have fun with. And then when Kindle came along in sort of 2010, it started kicking off. We saw a lot of independent authors starting to make some some serious money um, by publishing either books they'd written specifically to self publish or books that their publishers didn't want. And there's a lot of publicity around certain authors. Um, Joe Conrath is one of the biggest proponents, especially early on. He took a, he took his backlist of, I think, five or six titles that his publisher had said they didn't want to publish, that weren't fit for the, for the market, published them himself, and then started making, you know, a million dollars a year doing this. And nice. he said, you know, if I can do it, 
absolutely anybody can do. And I thought, you know, this is the perfect opportunity to do two things that I love, you know, writing, which I absolutely love, but never thought it was something I could do. And then two, being a bit entrepreneurial, owning that publishing process and marketing it myself as well. And I absolutely loved it. And I jumped in head first, it took me almost a year to write the first book. And then another year of struggling to figure out how to find an audience. Okay, so can we timestamp this? Because I, I know you've got kids now, so I'm thinking you've obviously had to make money not just hoping your books would take off long before you started writing for yeah. income. So did you just, have you had a, a day job for the last 10 years that we don't know about or before, well, I, before this? Not quite, no. I mean, I, I graduated 2008. Um, I did a postgraduate in law. Okay. Um, perfect timing graduated on the day of the recession like literally got my graduation certificate and then the next day it was on the news that everyone had been <laughs> sacked from all the, all the london firms it's like oh that's just great timing so um in this country you've got to you've got to do a two-year work placement to qualify and they just they all dried up overnight so my my choices were do i spend the next five years trying to do something or do i move on and do something else and in the end, after a couple of years of you know doing the law thing, I moved into a marketing job um, for a big company um, and did that for a couple of years. And I think this is one of the stresses with working for a big company is you have all these great ideas, but it might take a year to implement them if they ever get implemented at all. And I was mm. itching to do my own thing. And then I, I found out about Kindle and I decided I'm going to, you know, worst case scenario, I can write a novel. I'll have a great time doing it. It'll maybe it sucks. Maybe no one will buy it, but at least I will have written a novel, you know, big kind of bucket list item. So I did. And, you know, it sold a couple of hundred copies a month. So it was actually making, you know, a, a noticeable amount of money. So I just kept writing, you know, I'd, I'd write after work early in the morning at the weekend, put out as much content as possible. Um, and I wasn't even really thinking about promoting it. And, you know, the money, money was coming in, but it just wasn't getting to the point where I wanted it to be. Okay. So, so I, I'm picturing you working as a graduated lawyer, but in a marketing job, going, yeah, yeah. going home, uh, being with your family, finding an hour or two to write your novel, same with the weekends, finishing the book reading up on how to publish a Kindle, publish it on Kindle, and then did you just, you said you started making some money. So did the sales just start coming without you doing any marketing for that first one? Oh, early on, I, I saved up some money to do some um, paid advertising. I used some free promotions that we had available at the time. Um, and really, I mean, it did okay. Uh, but I'd notice that I'd get, a, I'd get a decent amount of sales around the time where I'd pay for a promotion. And then it would just drop down to nothing. Okay, so when you say pay for promotion, you've written a fiction book, you've written a novel. Mm. How do you promote a novel? Do you just put it in front of a bunch of readers in a forum or is it pay-per-click advertising? What's the promotion? So at, at the time, the only kind of feasible way to advertise was a company called BookPub. And that's, that, this is where the kind of big turning point came for me as well, was BookBub's business model is... If you're, a, if you're a reader and you sign up to BookBub, they will send you uh, a list of free or discounted books every single day in the genres that you're interested in. So when you sign up, you say, All right, here's my email address. I like thrillers and I like romance books. And they will send you an email every day with different thrillers and romance books that are you know, usually free or 99 cents. And from the author's point of view, you can pay to get featured in those emails. There's a, there is a curation process and not everybody gets in, um, but you can pay to get in front of that audience. And they've got a, a mailing list of like 1.5 million people. Right. So you can get a, you can get a lot of sales um, just from one advert. And I thought to myself, you know, I'm, I'm relying almost 100% on this advertiser. You know, I'm giving them this money. Yes, it's getting me a great return, but if they're the only people who can get me sales, this is trouble, you know, this is not going to last very long. Mm. And then I realized, you know, what's the, what's the only thing that BookBub and the other advertisers are doing is they're growing an email list mm -hmm. and they're sending out books that that email list is interested in and they buy them. And for me, that was the big turning point was like realizing if I just, you know, instead of worrying about sales, if I just focused on building my audience and building my mailing list, then I could do a promotion like this anytime I like. Mm. And I don't have to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars to be featured. I can just, you know, I can control who sees my books and who buys my books and I can do it wherever I like. And that was the big turning point for me. 
Okay, interesting. So I'd, I'd like to continue that thread, but I am curious about one more thing with that campaign. Did you, so you pay to be featured, they approve you, you get sent out in one of their email blasts. Mm -hmm. If you're selling it for 99 cents or a dollar and you're paying for the advertising, how are you making any profit from that? Well, you, you might sell five or 6,000 copies. Okay. So that's why it's, it's just a sheer numbers game. And this right. is what was so attractive to me was this, this model was if I had my own audience that I kind of curated carefully and then showed them my books and only my books, I wouldn't need a million people on my email list. I you know, just need a few thousand and it can make a big difference. Okay. Well, I think we're, we're very in line. I teach something similar, a small, very targeted audience and get, exactly. them, get them on the list. Okay, so did you, when you did those campaigns, though, did you actually build a list from the promotion or did you just go direct to sales of Kindle and, and that was it? Well, this, this is where the, um, we have a bit of a shift from kind of the strategy, which I think is very similar to, to blogging as well, which is, you know, grow your audience, grow a targeted audience, and then you can sell to them, you know, products that, what, what they're looking for. Tactically speaking, with fiction, getting people onto a mailing list is a bit more tricky because, you know, you think about it, it's a very wide demographic. It's quite broad. So how do you get people interested? So what I started doing was I would take the, the concept of the lead magnet that people use for blogging and I turned it into something that readers would like. So I kind of, I created what I call reader magnets, which is very much the same thing where I would offer uh, somebody a, a free copy of one of my books if they joined my mailing list. And I would put a, put a link in my books on Amazon and the other ebook retailers. I'd put a link on my website, big sign up form. And then I found that the more people downloading the book, the more people would go onto my mailing list. And then the more people would buy my books later on. And Amazon and the other ebook retailers have a great way of kind of boosting the number of people who are downloading your book because you can run free promotions on there. So you can make your book free for a limited time or you can make it permanently free. And it's kind of like having a permanent guest post on the world's largest e-commerce site. You know, People are coming across your books and they're seeing your, uh, your advertisement for your reader magnet. They go to your website, they sign up to your mailing list. And then later on down the line, I tell them about my other books. Mm -hmm. Or when I have a new book, I can do a big launch. Because over time, I've got all these thousands and thousands of people joining my mailing list. And they're there ready and waiting for me when I need to use them. So it was taking a, you know, a, a familiar approach in internet marketing as a whole and just kind of adapting it to work for authors and readers. Okay. Could you actually explain then how you executed that? You're from, from that initial campaigning you did with, with, uh, BookPub to growing your own list. And, and I'm assuming you must have started writing more books too, because if you're giving away one book for free, you need something to sell as well. So mm. could you take us forward? And, and again, this is to timestamp this. We're talking two years ago now, aren't we? Yeah. So in, in 2012, I published my, uh, no, sorry, 2013, I published my first book. And then I wrote um, a total of six novels over the next kind of 18 months or so. And then during that time is when I started focusing on building my mailing list as well. So within about six months of deciding, right, I'm going to build this mailing list. It's going to be my number one focus. I put the reader magnets into place. I started focusing on doing a lot more free promotions because you get so much more traffic when something's free. You know, it's magic. Um, getting more people onto the list and then actually emailing people and saying, hey, you know, you downloaded my, my, my first books for free, but hey, I've got four more that you might like. And here they are. And I told them about them. And, you know, it worked amazingly well. But you, you don't have to have a huge backlist of titles. You know, you only need a couple of pieces of content or a couple of books to make this really work for you. Okay, so then just to clarify, you actually are a, a thriller writer, Le the Leopold Blake series, is that? That's the one, yes. Okay, so to get it straight in my head, you released the first Leopold Blake thriller. Which one was, was that Pay Down? Is that the first one? I need, I need to look was, at your chronology. It was, it was kind of written out of order. I kind of rejigged the order later on. Okay. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Which was the first book one? Called, the book called Panic, Panic was the first one. Okay. That was it. Yes, that was Panic. So just in case people listening, if you want to look, I'm actually, I googled uh, Nick Stevenson and you can go to nickstevensonbooks.com and see his book catalog there. So you wrote Panic, you go to this company and, and they do a promotion, you pay money for it, but you make your sort of five, six thousand dollars in sales from a 99 cent uh, Kindle book, then you realize, well, I need to do be the owner of the list. So mm -hmm. you start giving away, 
uh, it looks like you give away the second book now, right? Which is mm -hmm. pay down. And that gets people onto your list. Now, just to clarify, you give away that book away for free on Kindle as yep. well as doing paid promotions still. Cause you obviously you said the traffic is obviously better when it's free, but you still have to source it from something. Right. Or is yes. I mean, I haven't done that many paid promotions because when, uh, cause Amazon is at its heart, it's a search engine. Mm -hmm. So, uh, whether your book is free or it's $10, um, if it's something that is, is tied into, uh, the Amazon's recommendation engine, like a, like a Google site, you know, if it's tied into that, you're going to do very well. So you get the, you get the opportunity to tinker around with metadata and, um, categories and tags and all kinds of stuff inside Amazon. But, you know, the, the, the net outcome is if people are downloading your book and giving it good reviews, that has a, a cumulative effect and Amazon will keep recommending that book time after time after time. So, you know, you can have a, a big push one month. And then that might last for quite a long time. You might not have to promote it again for a little right. while. And especially if it's free, um, you know, you're not making any money on the front end. But then later on, when you tell people about your other books or your other products, um, it, it just works amazingly well and it pays for itself 10 times over. So you know, there's lots of, um, there's lots of subtleties and ins and outs of marketing on Amazon. I think, you know, there are entire, courses devoted to understanding how the Amazon algorithms work and yeah. uh, and all that. So just in a nutshell, if, you, if you've got targeted relevant content, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, if you can get into the right subcategories and the right niches on Amazon, you'll naturally do a lot better. And that's part of what I teach authors to do as well, right. is understanding how that ecosystem works. Is that what you did with when you, so you gave away panic for, no, you gave away pay down for free. Uh, mm -hmm. So you just, basically learned how to do a great basically Kindle optimization campaign. And Absolutely. then uh, you start getting a lot of free opt-ins from people downloading that free book on Kindle. And every person who got it on Kindle, you said, join my email list to get more from me, right? Exactly, yes. And you, know, you don't have to go around offering people swathes and swathes of books. You know, if you've only got one book, you obviously can't give another book away for free, but you can do like excerpts or bonus chapters or something. Yeah, that works really well too. Uh, it's just giving people something in return for an email address, and they'll they'll bite your hand off because they've just downloaded a book and read it. They obviously they're, they're your perfect reader. Mm. They're going to want to get onto your mailing list, but you kind of have to give them a reason to. Mm. And you know that's that's the key thing. I mean, at one point I was getting you know, seventy or eighty people a day were signing up to my fiction list. Which was which is just great, and I wasn't really doing anything. And you know, over time, this all adds up on a daily basis. And before you even know it, you've got several thousand people. You're launching a new book, and instead of just uploading your manuscript into the void, you actually have five thousand people who can buy it on day one. And is that, that what happened? Right. Yeah, absolutely. So you is departed was the third one you wrote. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't until the later books when I'd got this kind of audience in place, because it took a while to grow it up. Um, and I switched from kind of my, my strategy was, let's write as much content as humanly possible and worry about marketing later. And I switched that round and I thought, right, I'm not going to write any more new content because 99.99999% of the planet has never heard of me. So if I focus my efforts on trying to reach the other 99.99999% of people, I will have better results and I won't burn myself out trying to put a book out every month. Okay. So I did that instead. So I stopped worrying about publishing a book and having to get a new book out every month because that's just not sustainable yeah. and focused on finding new people to show my existing work to instead. Okay, so how did you do that initially? Once, so once, I, uh, it's actually, just, let me ask you one more question first before we jump okay. into that. With the Kindle part of it, because I know there's a, um, for me there's a, a step here missing um, book goes on to Kindle for free. They want more from you is the call to action to join your email list just within the Kindle book itself. I put a call to action at the front of the book, uh, the back of the book um, in the product description on my website, Facebook page, you know, literally everywhere, okay. so everywhere possible. Gotcha. All right. So they've, they see that they, they like pay down. They want panic. They opt in. They, they, want more for you great so that you've got content so you've basically got products for sale if i'm talking about the model i'm using mm -hmm. you've got a, a lead magnet you've got products for sale on the, the front end uh, we can't really talk about a back end here i don't think because all the books are going to be quite low price so we're not going to suddenly jump to a, 
a hundred dollar book and then a thousand dollar book like you would with traditional information marketing. Oh yeah. Uh, but you, well, this is part of the question I wanted to ask you. Um, but let's keep going with that marketing question first. So you're, you're doing that and then you're realizing you need to go out to the world to start getting more opt-ins and mm-hmm. sales of what you already have rather than releasing more books. So how did you market yourself from that point forward? So I would, I would run launches for my books. I would kind of do mini launches, even though they'd been published for a while. I would, I would do mini launches for them. So all these new people would uh, join up to my mailing list in a particular month. I could then run a, say, a price promotion for those people for that month and say, right, you guys, you know, you've, you've signed up to my mailing list, which means you've read at least one of my books um, and you hopefully liked it. Uh, so here's, you know, here's one more book that you're going to absolutely love. And for, you know, for the next two days, it's 50% off. Or I'd say for the next two days, when you buy this book, you'll get these bonuses, you know, adding a little bit of scarcity into the mix. Mm -hmm. And people would jump at it, you know, and the more people you have in your mailing list, the more people buy it, the higher it goes up the charts on Amazon and the other stores. And then the recommendation engine kind of takes over and recommends it to more people. But it all starts with having that audience that you're building up over time. And then you can do these sort of mini launches every month. Mm-hmm. So and when, a- I, when I do get around to writing or finishing my next novel, I'll have all these thousands of people ready and waiting to buy it. Gotcha. So it's going to make a huge difference. A lot of compounding going on there. Yeah. So is the main source of new audience, because I can see existing audience helps you reach new audience, because as you said, you do a launch, so you're making the recommendation, recommendation engine work better for you than bringing more new people to you, which means the next launch works even better and it it compounds. Is -hmm. that the primary strategy you use or is there any other source of uh, significant new readership you get onto your list and, and so on? Recently, I've been doing Facebook advertising as well. And that's been great fun because I think as you've alluded to earlier in, in the conversation, fiction's a tough nut to crack. You know, if you're very used to having narrow niches for nonfiction, kind of focusing how-to stuff, um, coming up with a, a marketing plan that, that uh, addresses something broad like, you know, mysteries, it's, it's a bit of a disconnect. And especially with Facebook ads, you know, you have to be super targeted to make them work. So doing some fiction advertising on Facebook has been, has been great fun. And it's actually starting to work now as well, <laughs> which is awesome. But, you know, all the time I've got these, these free books on Amazon that are consistently getting downloads and they're consistently getting me um, opt-ins into my mailing list. But now adding Facebook as well means that, you know, I can, I can scale that up and down as much as I like. Mm-hmm. So if I need more traffic, I just buy more traffic. Uh, and that's another, that's a, that's a decent source of, rev- of, uh, of subscribers as well now. That's, that's doing really well. So I think... A lot of people will be curious how this model scales to $15,000 a month, especially if we're talking about free books, 99 cent books, and even at full price when you're doing your launches or you're doing discounted launches, you can't be mm-hmm. charging more than $20 a book, I'm assuming. Is that no, right? It's, it's a completely different model. It's not like, um, I mean, I, I do this as well where I have you know, information products that I sell direct. But the, the key thing to remember with Amazon is when you have a big launch or you sell let's say you sell 100 books in a day, that will kick you up the charts and you will stay there for quite a while until you start dropping back down again. So not all of my sales will come from my mailing list, but they'll be the ones to kind of supercharge and kickstart that process. So think of it like Google. You know, If you're trying to get your website at the top of Google for a particular search term or a particular category, you know, you, there are ways for you to get up to the top. And you will tend to stay there for quite a long time, as long as you're producing relevant content. And it's a similar approach with Amazon. So, you know, you might have um, a mailing list and you send out an email and you might sell three or 400 books. But then Amazon will see the sales activity. It will see the reviews that you've garnered over time and it will start recommending your book in its emails and it will start recommending its book in its search results. And it just kind of snowballs from there. But it all starts with having a, having a tactical way of actually kickstarting that process, which you kind of have to have an audience for. Otherwise, there's no way to start it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, and, and I'm guessing the short answer to this question too is you have to have volume sales to, to make 15000 a month. 
that especially price. with fiction right yeah, with fiction definitely so I you're mean, selling thousands of books every month exactly i mean the books are sort of four or five dollars each Okay. And you get uh, you get seventy percent of that on Amazon, and you know I, I don't just sell on Amazon; I sell on you know multiple stores all over the place. So it's kind of they're coming in from everywhere, um, but it all starts with getting that big push at the beginning, mm-hmm. and then once you start performing well, keeping a track of what uh, of what works, and then just help uh, helping the recommendation engines take over. But it all starts with having that audience. All right, I think I can sort of see how it all comes together. I, I can imagine. It's very challenging when I think about it because writing a book is a lot of work and doing information marketing requires a lot of writing. You're writing emails for launch sequences. You're potentially writing emails for affiliate partners to promote with. You're writing blog posts. You're writing, you know, all the information required for every page you need to set up for things like social media, like the pages on Kindle. So there's a lot of content mm-hmm. and you're writing books. I, can, I couldn't yes. imagine adding books to my list of things to write at the moment. So <laughs> I tend to think of it as segments. I do a campaign and then I do a product, but I never do them at the same time sort of thing, you know? Yeah. So is there, like, how do you do that? How do you, how do you, is it just becoming a really prolific writer? Is that the key or are you, do you have a trick? Well, for for me, for the fiction side of things, it was literally just a case of, you know, butt in chair, do the work, 1,500 words a day, every day, until the book's finished. And uh, you're absolutely right, it's exhausting, especially when you've got everything else you have to do as well. Um, but when it comes to kind of content marketing, I mean, people listening to this uh, may be aspiring authors or may already be authors, uh, whether it's a fiction genre or nonfiction, but you know, especially with nonfiction, you'll find that a lot of people can repurpose content they've already written for a new audience on Kindle. And that works amazingly well. So, you know, you've got a you've got a blog with hundreds of thousands of followers. You know, you've got some great posts. You can see which are your most, you know, popular posts. They could be repurposed into a book. They could be sold on Amazon. Or you could use that as another way to get leads onto your main site as well. It's not just about fiction. Amazon is a, is an amazing resource for finding new people, new audience, uh, and getting them onto your mailing list. It really does work amazingly well. I do have to ask you, this is a bit of a personal question because I'm interested in this more than anything. Um, as a fiction writer, I know, like you just said, obviously Amazon can be work, used for nonfiction, teaching someone like me can put my how to blog stuff on there. But let's say I do want to be uh, the next teenage author for you know, writing for teenagers, like we all want to have our books turn into movies, and that seems to oh, be yeah. the market right now. <laughs> um, you, you mentioned before when you went to Facebook and to do advertising, it's quite challenging because, like everyone, you have to find your niche and find a segment of your marketplace. Mm-hmm. Now, with teaching products, we do a customer avatar and we identify who they are, what their problems are, what's the emotions, what what they're trying to change about their life. Now, mm-hmm. when I go and grab a, a Leo, Leopold Blake thriller. I'm not trying to solve a problem other than perhaps boredom or, um, you know, a, a desire to, to uh, entertain myself in a, in a completely alternative world, feel some emotions that are exciting and fun, but it's not really solving critical problems like health and dating and all the things we talk about in, in the fic- nonfiction world. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to, and I can imagine a person listening into this as we're talking, going, well, I want to write thrillers. I want to write fantasy. I want to write sci-fi. And they're huge niches. That's equivalent to me saying, well, I want to be Tony Robbins. So I want to be yeah. the top-level top personal development person. Or, yeah. I, or I want to be Richard Branson, you know, the top-level entrepreneur. But that's it's not realistic. So how do you... If you have your, you know, your brand new and you've got your thriller, you've got your, this character, this protagonist you want to get out there, but you are really daunted by the fact that, let's face it, it's become so easy now, like your proof of this with, with Kindle, easy is not the right word, it's become so accessible with things like Kindle and so on that everyone's having a go at it. So the niching aspect has become even more important. So how do you do niching with fiction? Well, it's, it's still perfectly possible. I mean, if you look on, if you go have a look on Amazon as a, as a good example, and you start clicking through the genres, they've added multiple layers of subgenres. So my books are thrillers, but I would never put them in a thriller category. You know, I'd niche down at least two levels. So it could be, you know, a financial thriller or a murder thriller, or it could be a police procedural, or it could be forensic, or it could be serial killer. You know, there's loads and loads of different subcategories that you can get into. 
And they tend to be a lot less high competition. And if you can kind of own that subcategory, then you can do really, really well. So, you know, if I try to rank my books in overall thrillers, you know, I've got no chance because I've got to deal with Stephen King and Lee Child and these people. Just not going to happen. But if I niche down a couple of levels, there's still plenty of opportunity for growth in there. And yes, there are, you know, people are publishing books all the time, but it doesn't matter. You know, people start websites every day. That doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to give up blogging because there's too many blogs out there. You know, you find your corner of the market, you build your audience by building your email list, and then these people will follow you and you have that audience built for life. And you can start building that, you know, literally today if you can get the, you know, get the reader magnets in place, get people onto your mailing list and, you know, be a bit, be strategic about it. Don't just put content out into the world and hope for the best, mm. you know, actually think about how am I going to get my next customer, my next reader, and how am I going to communicate with them? Mm-hmm. I'm guessing some of that's knowing your audience, even though it is a fiction marketplace, there must be sort sort of characters like vampires are in right now. So I'm going to do something that's related to that. And that that's, that's almost like choosing, I'm going to do podcasting now because that's podcasting yeah. is in right now. So it's kind of exactly. like the similar sort of going where the, the audience is and what they want. Um, but still, I can imagine it's quite daunting to sort of think about well, it this. Is. And I think, you know, you absolutely hit the nail on the head when you, you talked about, you know, with nonfiction, with how-to products, you're thinking about what is the problem my customer needs to solve. And, you know, you're absolutely right with fiction. That's not even something you think about because one fiction reader and another fiction reader put them together. They're completely different people. There's the kind of, there's almost no common thread other than the fact that they read thrillers. So how do you target them? You know, it's a slightly different approach because you use Amazon to do that targeting for you. And then it's just your job to get them off Amazon and onto your mailing list. So you don't have to worry too much about kind of getting the customer avatar pinned down. Mm for fiction because it's very broad um for non-fiction absolutely you've got to do that but for for fiction it's you know it's a numbers game okay so you know you can get tens of thousands of people but you need that volume to get the revenue and is amazon the be end all at the moment for for doing this process i mention amazon um because it's probably the most sophisticated of the websites that you can sell books on um it's the biggest um personally i think you know, you can go exclusive with Amazon if you want to. They do give you a couple of perks. But I'm trying to move away from that because at one point Amazon was 90% of my income. And I didn't really want that. So I tried to ease off Amazon and build up on the other platforms instead. Right. Uh, and that took a while to do. But, you know, we're now at, now at a place where Amazon is maybe 50% of book revenue. Which leads me to a question then. If you are always trying to improve your Amazon rankings, should you not sell all your books through Amazon? If you want to get a really high ranking on Amazon, going exclusive with them uh, is a good way of doing that, but you don't necessarily get paid more. So it's, 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 uh, there's a lot of politics and ins and outs involved, which I can go into if you like. Um, <laughs> but essentially, um, if you go exclusive to Amazon, they will make your book available um, to their prime membership readers for free. Right. Which means you get paid a certain amount per page that yep. they read. It's like 0.01 pence or something <laughs> per page. You know, it's like a subscription model. It's depressing, yes. <laughs> yeah, which means that you could have a book that's you know, in the top 50 of a popular category, earning you less money than something that's not even in the top 100 because of the way that the the ranking works. But, you know, ignoring ranking and looking at the kind of algorithm as a whole, you can, you can do really well just on a kind of rolling by day by day basis without being in the top of your category. You know, you don't have to be right at the top mm. to be making serious money. What did you do? And that's just Amazon. You said you want, you're split 50 50 now. So what's the other 50%? So that comes from Nook, uh, iTunes, and Kobo. Which are the um, the other ebook retailers you can use? Okay, so if you're doing a promotion, how do you decide? Like, here's my new book. Go buy it here. How do you decide that? Or you just say it anywhere? Um, I just I, li- I list out the links. Okay. So if you want to buy it from Amazon, here's a link. If you want to buy it from Nook, here's a link, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, simple. And you can you can you can you can segment by that as well. You know, see who's clicking what, and then offer them a particular platform if it's if it's appropriate. Gotcha. 
All right, cool. Okay, Stephen, thank you. Um, <laughs> and there's a lot of, I'm very curious personally about a lot of these questions, hence I'm getting you to drill down on so much there. Oh, it's uh, true. I mean, I tell you what, I could talk about this all day. Um, and I think the issue is um, there's probably enough to talk about that it would take all day. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, it can be quite complex. Thanks. But, uh, yeah, no, I appreciate it, Nick. There's, there's, um, it's, uh, it's uh, like you said, this whole course is on this. You train people on this. And I, obviously, we sh I'd like to transition, transition to your transition from obviously learning how to do something, which is make a full time income and then some 100,000 a year selling fiction books and then translating that experience, that knowledge into a second business. Like I could, you probably don't call it a second business. I don't know, but a teaching business mm -hmm. um, using more traditional information marketing. Um, I'd like to look at that, but one more question because this is goes back to what we initially talked about with uh, promoting fiction. If uh, someone like myself, I know how to blog and I know how to build an email list and I know how to do marketing through podcasting, social media, and, and I, I know the fundamentals of basically a sales funnel business model. What do I actually put though? on my blog, on the social media? What do I get myself interviewed on the podcast if I'm a fiction author? Do I just talk about the characters in my book? Do I just give away chapters in my book on the blog? Like, is that all that you do for blog content is more, more fiction from you or what, what else can you put there? Well, for fiction, I have never blogged ever and I wouldn't recommend fiction authors spend much time blogging. Okay, why is um, that? Because, just because of, of, of what we talked about, about getting the right niche. You know, Amazon's one thing because they're designed to sell books. So they will put the right reader in front of your book if you've set it up correctly. But Google is a different story. So if you're writing a book about, uh, a blog about fiction, you know, how do you target anyone? You know, it's, it's almost impossible to think about who am I writing this blog for? So a lot of authors end up writing, um, political blogs, you know, or they write about their own characters or they do kind of, they write short fiction and post it up for free for people to read. But I think, you know, if you're doing an 80, 20 analysis of what works, blogging for fiction is definitely not up there. The nonfiction, you know, it's, it's amazing. It really is. But for fiction, you've got to have a really, really narrow genre. Mm. So for example, a few people doing really well with blogs and fiction are the guys writing um, prepper, prepper fiction, like prepper doomsday stuff, which is kind of like end of the world. Uh, I don't know if you've had the prepper revolution over where you are, but it's a bit big. It's crazy. And there's, all, there's, there's a whole fiction category uh, dedicated to this on Amazon, and it's huge. And because it's such a narrow genre, you know, you can write a blog about preppers, you know, how to prepare for the end of the world. Uh -huh. You know, here's the best kind of bottled water to use for your <laughs> yeah. shack, you know, that kind of thing. And people absolutely love it. And that's kind of a, a, the exception that proves the rule a bit. Um, but generally, if you're writing in a broad fiction category, you know, I don't believe that blogging is going to help you. You know, you need a website and you need a, a funnel. But I don't think blogging is, is the best way to generate traffic for fiction. Right. It's almost the opposite. Once you are successful, having the blog as a place to do behind the scenes things like you could certainly see, oh, I'm sure she does. JK Rowling would, you know, post something to a blog talking about an upcoming book she's writing or a character she's developing and she already has an audience. So they are already there exactly. at the blog. But it's, it's, it's vice versa. They're not generating the audience. She didn't get there by blogging. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. See that I, I, I always had in my head that you would potentially write the entire book initially as blog posts if, if you wanted mm -hmm. to maybe develop the characters publicly, develop the storyline publicly, get feedback publicly, or does that generally happen more in forums and communities and so on? Well, I think you can do that, but you might as well put it on Amazon or Wattpad, for example, which is a, another platform you can upload free stuff to. Um, you know, having your own website to post um, you know, fiction on, you're going to find it very, very tough to find those readers in the first place. But once you have that audience, you know, like you said, it's a great way of building buzz and excitement about your next book. Okay. So I'm a little sad to hear that. Blogging is not a good way to grow a, a fiction readership. And don't, don't be sad. It's still, a, it's still an amazing way to use it for nonfiction. I mean, I, I blog <laughs> a lot for, for my nonfiction business. Um, but for fiction, I take a look at my audience and I look at the demographics and I look at the kind of people who engage with me. And they're all 
worlds apart. You know, there's no two people that I could sit down and think, you know, what have they got in common? Right. So every time I sit down and think, you know, what can I blog about that's fiction related? I come up blank and I realize, you know, I could spend a whole year trying to come up with something that works or I could just, you know, focus on what's working right now and build that. So that's what right. I'm doing. So you don't write what Leopold Blake was doing on, you know, Christmas or something just to sort of I mean, I definitely would, but I, I would publish it direct to Amazon. You know, I wouldn't put it on the blog. Okay. Because so, Amazon's got that bigger, has got that audience there. You know, they're already looking for stuff like that. I don't have to battle to get them onto my website so much. Yeah. But, but I guess I see Amazon as a place where you put a completed, at least something that's substantial, you know, 50 pages minimum, where, yeah. you know, a blog post could be 2,000 words. So that's not going to go on Kindle or on, on, on Amazon, is it? No, you could do compendiums though. You could do uh, compilations. Um, I think you know if if you want to blog and you want to get some content out there onto your onto your website, you know if you are if you are effectively getting readers to your blog, then that could work really well. But as a way to generate traffic, it's not something that I've, I've found works t- too well. Mm. But it could be a great way to build engagement. Okay, interesting. But I'm so used to teaching people. And obviously it makes sense, as you said, for nonfiction to use the blog as the central hub and then social media, podcast, YouTube, and Kindle, for example, are all extensions of the hub that bring people back to the blog. Like, for example, the opt-in form for the lead magnet would exist on my blog Mm -hmm. uh, or landing page, but still would be through the blog. And it would be in the Kindle book and Kindle would be the initial contact point, but it would bring people to the blog, just as YouTube might be for a video or uh, this podcast is going to reach people and then some of them are going to join my email list too. Yeah. So that that's how I'm kind of the hub and spoke model has been very common. That's why I was kind of curious how this could apply to fiction, but it sounds like you don't have the hub. It's more like you go to the existing platforms and do most of your, your work there Maybe you have one landing page or a basic website, like you said, but there's not a lot of content production or distribution going on in a site you own. It's going ex- entirely on external platforms. Is that uh, correct? Essentially, yes, because you know it's more effective to go where the audience is already looking for you okay. than trying to get them to come to you via Google or somewhere else. All right. Well, let's uh, let's look at that other, other side of the fence then. So you you had this kind of successful period of your life of writing these fiction books, figuring out how to make money from them, and then suddenly you're thinking, well, you have an opportunity to teach this as well. But I'm assuming mm-hmm. that wasn't a world you were used to because you had been writing fiction up to that point. So could you take us through uh, from the point you realized there's a market? Like did someone actually say to you, can you help me get my book published and selling? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this this is where the whole, you know, the idea of the blogging as a strategy flips completely on its head and it's like the most amazing resource ever. Um, because I, I decided when I I'd first started writing and publishing that I was going to write a blog about the experience. So I was going to write down, you know, all the trials and tribulations of publishing and the successes and the failures and be as transparent with figures as possible. Because, you know, this is very new to everybody. So I thought, you know, I'm going to just list out what I did, what results I got, you know, how much money I made or how much money I didn't make. And, you know, I would just write down everything and then people, you know, might read it and might find it interesting. And then sort of over over a couple of years while I was kind of writing maybe one blog post a month or something, so nothing crazy, I was just saying, you know, I, I, well, I published a book, it sold this many copies and I did X, Y and Z to make that happen. And people started following me. And then how they find after, you? Well, they found me through forums. I think at the time I was a member of a couple of forums, mm-hmm. and I think I, I managed to generate like maybe a hundred or two hundred readers in like my first year. Okay, which is just nothing. Can, can you mention um, which forums they were just for budding authors? I think it was um, one forum was the the KDP forum, which is Amazon's own forum for people publishing on Kindle. Mm-hmm. And I think there are a couple of others I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but the, the Kindle one, the KDP one, was the main one because everybody on there was kind of in the same boat. You know, they were all trying to publish their books and trying to get sales. Mm-hmm. And I would go on there and I would say, "Hey, I, I just I did this promotion, and it you know it it either worked or it didn't." And I would explain 
why it worked or why it didn't work. And people, you know, start to show interest and they get some real value out of the posts. And then, you know, after a while, I had a couple of hundred readers, nothing to write home about. And people were saying, you know, Nick, you should, you should write a book about this. <laughs> um, so Getting I thought, very well, meta. Yeah, it's a book. Is it write a book about writing books about you know all this kind of stuff? Um, so I did really. I just I actually I wrote it from scratch. I didn't repurpose anything, and I wanted to focus specifically on kind of what had worked for me the most. And at, at the time, it was it was about metadata. So looking at how to optimize your books on Kindle to get the most out of the algorithm. So you know, like we said earlier, when you do a promotion, you want that to you want to stay. And the recommendation engines for as long as possible, and I'd figured out, you know, if you if you optimize your books using the right kind of metadata and keywords and titles and categories and all this kind of stuff, you can make a big difference. So I wrote a book uh, on this, put it on Kindle, and you know, it did really well. You know, it was it was selling sort of twenty twenty five copies a day, uh, which is you know, it's not retirement money, but I would mention affiliate products in the book. I would say I use this tool. Um, to make this process really quick, and I really I think it's a great tool. And here's a link. And I thought, you know, someone might buy it. I might as well try and get an affiliate link for it. And you know, I started getting sort of three or four affiliate sales a day as well. Mm -hmm. So I was earning more from the affiliate sales than from the actual book, which was kind of cool. Um, and then I sort of realized that with 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 nonfiction approaches, sort of a how to solve a problem. It's an entirely different kettle of fish because these people are going to use this information to make something in their lives better and they're willing to pay for it. And they will buy software and they will buy other products that they believe will help them get there. And, mm -hmm. you know, I started realizing that actually, you know, this is a great business opportunity because I get to help authors do what they want to do and I get to, to make some, some money on the side as well. So the book kind of became, um, a mini course, like I did a like a ten a ten part email series where I would teach people different things about how to market on Kindle, and I think I mentioned like one or two affiliate products because my my aim was always I'm never going to spam. I'm always going to give you tons of value, and if you happen to buy it, then great. Mm -hmm. But I won't kind of go overboard on it. And then that did so well, I kind of blew away my expectations. I had emails from people saying, you know, this was a great series. Where can I learn more? You know, do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching? And when people start asking, you know, do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching? I think you're kind of onto something. Mm -hmm. So I kind of weighed this up. Do I want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching? Well, not really. Um, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> not, not that I wouldn't love to help people, but you know, how do I kind of justify the time on that versus something else? How much would I have to charge? Oh, it would have to be quite a lot of money. In which case, how would I make sure people were getting value? And oh, I kind of back and forth, back and forth. And then eventually decided, well, actually, if I, if I create a, a course, an online course that teaches people everything that I do to build a, a platform and launch a book, and here's the exact process I use, then I can help loads more people. It won't cost them anywhere, as, uh, anywhere near as much money. And this could be really cool. So I spent about in about four or five months putting the course together and then launched that earlier this year. And uh, that's been going really well too. So yeah, it's exciting times. So how have you grown this business? Because it sounds, and I'm, I'm, I'm still in awe of the fact that you would be adding more writing <laughs> to it already. You must have had to pause uh, Leopold Blake's adventures for a while while you built up the teaching I business. I did. It's, yeah. it's, been a, it's been a while since I've published anything. I, I do have a book nearly finished, but uh, it's it's been a good hiatus to get this up and running. And interesting too, because uh, writing fiction versus writing teaching, they're very different forms of creativity, aren't they? They are. And it was uh, it was a living living hell. It really was. <laughs> and um, it's because I, I had in my head um, this is how I, in my head I was like this this is what the modules are going to cover. These, these are the action points that people are going to get. These are the outcomes they can expect. And here are the tools they need to go do it. Okay. So I had great fun planning it, but then I had to <laughs> sit, I had to sit down and record the damn thing. Uh -huh. So, you know, you sat in front of, uh, in front of your computer screen with like screen flow on, and you've got a slide pack and you're like, right, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna deliver this lesson and I'm gonna be really upbeat and cheery about it, even though this is like hour number eight today that I've had to redo this particular slide because I keep fluffing it up. And then the unexpected amount of time that it took to to edit the video and get the audio working properly, get the course website up and running, you know, it was it was a tech nightmare. But I was glad that I'd gone through it. I think just so that I could appreciate just how much work goes into these things. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a different skill, but it was still enjoyable to actually write the content and get it all out there. It's just kind of all of the procedural technical stuff that kind of makes you want to bash your head against the wall. Mm. Okay. So how, how does that business look right now? This, this, the teaching training business. So you've got this course online, you've, you've got a lead magnet, you've got a, a, a page. I know you've got your, um, your Nick Stevenson dot com, no, Nurusha dot com. That's it, isn't it? That's my old blog. Yes. Oh, okay. So, so which so is- that was the one where I would I would talk to talk about the things I'd done um, for for authors, and I'm kind of transitioning more over to your first ten k readers dot com, okay. which has a much more sensible URL. To yeah. be honest, got it. Okay. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, your first 10K readers is, is a landing page where that that was a blog, so it's a little little different, right? Exactly. So, so I'm going to try and get the the blog over to your first 10K readers, kind of have a bit of a all in one hub. Uh, but that's kind of planned for the future. Gotcha. So, so I, I use the blog um, to give people content, you know, to give them articles that they're going to find useful. But you know, the, the the traffic generation methods are very much the same that I use for my fiction um, business as well. I have content on Amazon that's either free or it's cheap and it leads through to a call to action inside the books which leads to my landing page people sign up and they get the free content and then they get the the pitch for the, for the course mm-hmm. after you know i've made sure that they have received enough content from me to make a uh, to make a good decision to build the trust exactly so how much does your course cost so the course is 597 and um or there's a monthly option and um yeah, that's how much it costs. Okay, so are you, are you building a funnel? Like, do you have upsells or plans for you know high end coaching programs? I'm, I'm assuming you have a vision for this. I did, and you know what? It's, I, I think I was very much in danger of spending all my time on visions, <laughs> and I had you know in my head I had this this amazingly complex funnel which would segment people by behavior and they would look at integrating with all these different platforms. And I would send different emails to these people and different emails to that people. And I would have upsells and I would have cross sells and I would have evergreen affiliate stuff going on. And (laughs) I thought, well, how long is this going to take me to implement? And um, yeah, a long time. So at the (laughs) moment, it's, it's very simple. I thought it was much better to get something simple out there and then build it over time and start off complex and possibly never get there. So currently, it's very simple. You know, everyone goes into uh, the landing page um, and they receive uh, case studies, they receive videos over the course of about a week uh, and they get some blog articles in there as well. And then they will be told about the course and then if they decide to buy the course, they'll then get the access to the members area and then if they don't get the course, they will go into a, a separate list or I send them broadcast emails every now and again about new content that I've got available. Okay. So it's, it's about as simple as you could possibly get it. Mm-hmm. But it took a long t- it still took a long time. Yeah, it always does. Oh yeah. Now, uh, do you mind breaking out a little bit the technical components that goes into uh, really both your businesses uh in terms of obviously you're building landing pages, you've got you're hosting a blog, you must have a content delivery system for the course. Can you mm-hmm. touch on that plus your email list what autoresponder you use? So currently, I'm using MailChimp and have used them for years. Um, But I'm moving over to Infusionsoft at the moment, which is a lot better for kind of designing campaigns and kind of kicking the automation up a notch. Mm -hmm. Uh, MailChimp, absolutely fantastic. And, you know, if you're just getting started, MailChimp or Aweber, you know, they're fantastic and you should just go use them. Um, Infusionsoft is a whole game changer and it's got a steep learning curve. So I'm kind of transferring contacts over at the moment mm-hmm. but currently it's um mailchimp for the mailing list um and it's for the course is hosted on uh genesis theme with wishlist member mm-hmm. and woocommerce to handle the, the payments and that's hooked up to stripe and paypal and then landing pages i use optimize press which is kind of like lead pages but you can kind of host it on your own site and you can 
design it from scratch. So those are the key things, I think. That's it. I mean, that's all you yeah. need, right? Membership, email, landing pages, blog. You've got the yeah, key. basically, yeah. It's all it all is it all there. It all it all kind of works together <laughs> on a good day. Uh, <laughs> no, it does. It's 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 very slick, actually. I um, and I think I fell into that trap of trying to do it all yourself. And I think um, in the end, I, I got a web developer to help me get it all to work together. So that was right. probably the best money I ever spent. Anyone else on your team now? Uh, I've got the uh, the web guy who looks after anything that goes wrong with the back end. And he also puts new systems into place for new products, which I have planned and the infrastructure is in place for them, just not completed. Mm-hmm. And I have a virtual assistant as well who handles all the incoming email. So it leaves me a bit freer to focus on uh, that vision we talked about, like all this cool stuff that I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can let the business run in the background. All right. So in, in summary, you've got upwards of $50,000 a month now coming into your two combined fiction and nonfiction business. It sounds to me like the majority of inbound customer flow is still coming from Amazon. Is that for both businesses? Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, in terms of pure volume for the fiction side of things, I mean, it's just overwhelmingly dwarfs the the non-fiction side of things but because like we said earlier it's because it's quite a broad demographic uh-huh. it's very difficult to find something that they can all kind of relate to other than your books so you, you, you're looking at high volume low low price products right. on the fiction side whereas on the non-fiction side it's much the opposite so i'm kind of working two diametrically opposite business approaches <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of interesting i've got to have my different hats on but it kind of teaches you a lot about how different online businesses work. So it's right. very cool. And they're very symbiotic because you need to keep learning and proving your fiction ability to teach and coach and help others in that market with your nonfiction exactly. business, right? So. Yeah, and I mean, I learn new stuff every day. Um, 90% of it's crap. <laughs> the 10% of it that actually works is what I will eventually pass on to um, the guys on the course once I've thoroughly tested it. So like Facebook advertising, for example, is quite new for fiction. It's been quite tough to get it to that point. But, you know, we're starting to see some great returns on that now. So that's very cool. Yeah, you'll be a cutting edge kind of person if you get out there and say, this is how I sold a million books through Facebook ads, right? That would probably go viral. That would be cool. Yeah. All right. um, Nick, anything else you want to throw in before we start heading towards wrapping up the call? Anything I haven't covered here, you haven't covered? I think we've covered a lot, actually. I, I think for, for the guys listening, it's it's a lot to take in. Yeah. Because I think we're, we're both talking about this from the standpoint of people who have kind of been through it. And, you know, it all kind of makes sense to us. But, you know, anyone who is thinking about, do I want to publish on, on Amazon? You know, absolutely. If you want to publish something, absolutely go for it. It's not as difficult as we might have made it sound. <laughs> there are some very kind, there are some very um, specific steps that you can follow to get the book out there start building your audience and it's not as scary as it seems mm. well go to your first 10k readers.com and i think you, that's that's the first thing get yourself educated on, on what nick's done and uh I, I certainly would not dive into a new platform without following someone else's lead especially something like kindle which seems to be so important to the the, the fiction author at the moment yeah for sure yeah yeah, I, you know, as as challenging as it sounds, I have to admit what you did to begin with, um, the, the part that to me sounds more challenging than anything else is the sheer volume of content to produce because writing mm-hmm. a book is a big undertaking. But strategically, you're going to where the audience is, which is Amazon. You're trying to prove the value of your book by getting people to actually download it, which is mm-hmm. 101 marketing, trying to find that core base of readers that's that's hard work let's face it you got to get yeah. get out there and push your name and you know, try and build that tribe but once you've got a little tribe going they can help you reach a few more and like you did you can compound from one success climb that success ladder to the next one and each launch campaign builds your base which means it's bigger than the next Meanwhile, you're still writing the second, third, and fourth book at the same time, <laughs> right? I won't lie. It was, it was a tough, tough year or two. Yeah, but yeah. it was enjoyable because, you know, when you're writing a book, you have to enjoy it. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to do it for very long. Yeah, uh, that's why I was interested to hear you sort of describe your experience becoming a how-to writer versus a fiction mm-hmm. writer. Um, I've never written fiction before, and I, even the concept of writing dialogue to me is foreign. I'm thinking, how, you know, how to... 
that's <laughs> going to be interesting to do because normally I talk about when I write my blog, I do talk about things that go on in my head using a sort of first person perspective, but not I don't dialogue, you know. So yeah, uh, it's a totally different style of writing, and I think、um, that's probably a bigger challenge here. Is a fiction author on some levels has to do a style of writing that's not. As interesting to them, it's it's marketing, it's sales, it's self promotion. I think that's one of the biggest hurdles that no doubt you have to deal with with all your your students all the time. It's yeah. I mean, I love it.、Um, you have to kind of coax some people into the the whole marketing mindset, but、uh, they they get there. They、mm. definitely get.、There. I'm guessing your first 10k readers dot com is the number one place for the audience to go to if they want more from you. Absolutely, yes. That's the best place to reach me because. You will get all the blog content. You'll get the videos, and you'll get a way to get in touch if you have any questions as well. Awesome. Okay. Well, Nick,、uh, thank you for being so open, especially on the fiction side. I know we spent a lot of time there.、Um, probably an area where my audience is not as familiar as with the you know the how to teaching side. Sure. Since we cover that all day long,、um, and it, I think、uh, <laughs> it's a dream for a lot of writers, no matter what type of writing you're doing, to have. A published book, and I think that dream has probably changed since it's become so easy to see your book published on Kindle.、Mm-hmm. The criteria now is is actually to have readers, and that's what you know you're focusing、yeah. on. So absolutely, I、yeah, appreciate that.、Um, good luck with everything、Thank、else.、You. I hope you get that funnel and see some great segmentation going with Infusionsoft. That'll be amazing. And I've got an Entreport, so a similar level of power there. And there's so many、yeah. things you can do. It's crazy.、Um, yeah, and good luck with the business. Thank you, and thank you for having me on. I don't know about you, but I get pretty excited hearing about becoming a published author. It's on my to-do list、uh, at some point in the near future as well. So listening to Nick tell his story gets me excited, gets me motivated to start doing some of the things he's done. Now, if you want to grab the other podcasts I produce, you can see my entire archive by just googling for my name, Yaro, Y A R O. And if you do enjoy my podcast, I'd love for you to leave a review on iTunes and also subscribe to my email newsletter for this podcast. You can do that by going to interviewsclub dot com, where you will find a form to sign up to the newsletter. All right, that's it for this episode of the Entrepreneur's Journey podcast, and I'll speak to you on a future episode very, very soon. Goodbye.